out and we will. So we won't wait for our other person. Okay, so I really just want to start off. I'd like to inter introduce myself at least, but I also feel like I want to start off with a guided meditation. So we're just kind of like naturally getting into that relaxed state. So I think I'm even just going to hold off in, on in, even talking about anything and just do a little bit of grounding so we can just come into that space together so that we can check in with our numbers too to see if we can even get down to like a one, get really calm. So that as things approach, we, we're not as close to that trigger mark, right? Because <laughs> four is kind of like right away, like very close to a five. So if we're at one, um, then, you know, we're further away from, from being triggered because we're bringing up really old stuff and it can be really painful. So this I feel like is the most powerful work we can actually do. Um, so I'm really happy you guys are here to share this with me. And I'm looking forward to doing it for myself too, because sometimes we don't, we don't realize how many uh, people we are still hanging on to stuff towards, right? Um, you can block people out of your life, but they still energetically like to, you know, creep back in in the mind or show up in a picture somewhere or, you know, through conversation. So it is really nice to feel like if tonight we can just get to resting um, in our hearts in our bodies um, and then hopefully in our, in our minds so that we're not being re-triggered or we can just, again, just, I my goal here is to put some things to rest, okay? So your body is gonna be an indication of, and I just, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen here, but this is just what I'm feeling called to is yeah, just that your the way your body feels is an indication of, of um, how much forgiveness work you've done you know, so if at the end of this, you're kind of still feeling a little bit restless, that might mean that if you're coming into the program, that's a good thing because we're going to keep working on it. If you're feeling like really, really peaceful and calm, um, we should still come into the program because that means it's working too. <laughs> so, and also the program for this, this forgiveness that I'm teaching here is June 14th. So that starts up on Wednesday and it's for three Wednesdays for one hour from seven until eight. Okay. Uh, so my goal is also boundaries as, as more of a focus for one class, uh, the heart chakra for another class and the root chakra for another. So I kind of feel, I'm feeling called to that being the order. So we can kind of start acknowledging uh, with our boundaries where we're kind of not happy. And then we can start doing the heart work. And then we can do more of that root chakra work of, of the grounding in relation to that. So we're gonna come into a relaxed state, whatever that looks like and feels like for you. So for myself anyway, um, sometimes I'd like to put a little music on, um, but in this scenario, sometimes even just a little bit of stillness can be nice as well. So the, the goal here is to be able to close your eyes and even just listening to the sound of your breath. I'm really just coming into a space where you're feeling like it's possible for you to relax. Maybe you're really tired today. So that's, that might actually be really easy for you if you're almost ready to fall asleep. I know some people work night shift here. So your, your system might be a little off as it is. Maybe you just had supper. So maybe you're full and so that's easy for you to, to relax. And as you just find your breath here, we're just gonna imagine our lives, being healed, being whole. And just noticing when you think about your life being healed, what comes up for you. And again, if you have a journal, you, if you don't want to stay in this really relaxed state, you can also uh, just journal too. Um, but just noticing, just noticing what you think of or how you feel when you use the word healed. Noticing if the ego wants to pop up and say, I'm already healed. Or, oh, I've got a lot of healing to do. <laughs> Whatever 
whatever it is, it's probably one way or the other. But noticing the sensations of what healing represents to you. Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it connection? I'm just noticing what sensations come up for you around the word healed. Feeling completely healed. Would it mean that you've let go of anger? How about that you've let go of resentment? Are you friends with everybody? Or are you just content? Because it's a little bit different for everyone. Noticing if that makes you feel more relaxed, thinking about those things. Or it could even trigger a little bit of feelings of being upset or dissatisfied as well. Acknowledging maybe you have areas of your life that you are here to work on too. So there's no wrong or right, but we are working on relaxation too. So just trusting that you can look into things that might be upsetting for you or things that aren't healed, but you can still maintain some form of relaxation. And that's kind of our goal. I'm not here to upset anybody. And now looking into the word forgiveness. Just thinking about the word forgiveness. What does that word mean for you in your own personal life right now? Is, is that a relationship that you have with somebody that you'd like to forgive? Is it your relationship with yourself on a daily basis? Is there resentment? And if there is some resentment, just thinking about who you might be holding that resentment towards. And even if you could just apologize to somebody right now, who pops up in your mind that you would like to apologize to? And maybe there was something that you feel like you need to apologize for. And these people, they could be living or dead, doesn't matter. I'm just finding your breath here. I'm just noticing if your shoulders are carrying any stress. A lot of that has to do with your heart. So just seeing if you can even allow your heart to open just by relaxing your shoulders and just getting comfortable. And again, noticing if you're feeling heavy I'm just trusting that it's okay to feel a little heavy. And let's do a couple little Theta Healing downloads. If you don't know what Theta Healing is, you're just, all you have to do is say yes. If you, if you energetically feel like you want to receive this download. So I offer you the download based on what I'm, I'm feeling would be supportive. And you're just agreeing to that you want to let go of those emotions or those thoughts. And we're going to replace those emotions and thoughts with something positive that would be a little bit more uh, fulfilling or satisfying for you. 
And I'm also going to call some Reiki healing energy in. And that is only for the people that are open to that. So it's emotional and spiritual healing as well. So it's just where you're in this relaxed state and just help you feel a little lighter naturally. But again, only opening up to it if you want to, because you have full power and control over what you want to say yes to and what you want to receive. So we're just going to start here, just calling that energy in. And reminding to continue to, to feel into this energy. Notice where you feel any sensations. So would you like to know that it's safe to ground you, yourself? So really focus in on the root chakra. And if so, just say yes. Yeah. Would you like to know that it's safe to let go of any trauma that you've experienced from the past? Or would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have this new healing energy that you're that you're desiring for yourself moving forward? Whatever that looks like and feels like for you, you were just feeling into it yourself. And would you like to let go of any resistance that you might have at this time towards forgiving yourself or anyone else who played a role on your stage? Would you like to know that it's safe to come into the vibration that you're meant to be in? Would you like to know that it's safe to raise your vibration as well? So not just coming into the energy that you're supposed to be in, but let's raise your vibration even, even higher by just by opening up to this. Would you like to know that it's safe to keep your heart open moving forward? Would you like to know that it's safe to trust that it's okay to remain open in your heart chakra? Nothing bad will happen to you. Would you like to let go of times in your life where people have hurt you uh, to the point where you might have felt like you weren't going to make it or you know, any, any emotions that you might have felt in the past around not being worthy or not being good enough as a result of someone else's um, energy, essentially, could be something that they did to you, but we're just going to say their energy. We're going to let that go on all levels. So what that means is if this was like a an ancestral uh, lineage uh, pattern of behavior of not feeling worthy or if there was even any abuse that that could have been like family related right so we're gonna let it go on a genetic level and on a history level as well so like anything that society has taught males or females uh, to how to act and how to behave that maybe wasn't uh, wasn't serving us as a society or as a whole. And would you like to trust that moving forward you can offer more healing and support to other people as a result of your own healing journey? And only if you want that, okay? And let's let go of any cell trauma, shock, that you've had to the body as a result of these things? Would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to be kind to others, to, to be compassionate towards others, and also to uh, forgive others as well moving forward?
A little breathing into that. Just pay attention here to what's coming up for you around all of that. Notice, does that feel good to do? Is that easy to do? And just noticing any resistance here that you might have towards that. If you're thinking, hmm, not really sure if everybody deserves kindness. <laughs> there are some people out there that they just don't deserve it. <laughs> so just noticing that, like if you go to that place where you're like, I'm only going to be kind to people that are, you know, worth my energy or worth my time. I'm not wasting my time on other people who, who are assholes or who are hurting children or whatever it is, right? Because that's just the pain talking, right? That's the little you still in pain. And so let's let go of anything that happened to you as a child as well that was painful or hurtful for you. Um, that your that your energy feels safe to release. So we're only going to let go of what we feel safe to let go of, trusting that spirit will kind of let that unfold as it needs. Would you like to? So we're going to let that go on all levels as well. So it still feels like genetic history related. Would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have success in your life as well? And would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to embrace being open and having success at the same time? Nothing bad will happen to you. Would you like to also let go of times in your life where you felt so numb as a result of some of this frozen, stuck energy, you know, that you might have disassociated, disconnected, or even developed a disease or an illness as a result of this? Would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have more connection now moving forward, that it's safe to connect to your heart chakra? And would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to connect to, if you feel called towards angels? Uh, would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have angels surround you when you need support? Would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to feel that angelic light on a daily basis? Especially if you're having a hard time with anything that you are going through right now. And so someone was seeing an orange light. Thank you, Sophie. Yes to angels. Wonderful. So an orange light can be a representation of the sacral chakra, which is very much when we're doing inner child work or trauma work or wound work. Like if you if your mother had trauma, for instance, and you were being carried in her womb, yeah, you could be feeling into all of your mother's emotions, all of your mother's pain. So although we're coming into the world so innocent, it's like we're already carrying all the pain and, and trauma that mom had or the emotions of the things that were that were coming up for her while you were inside of her, right? So would you like to know that it's safe to cut any energy cords with anyone that is no longer serving you in your life. Let's also bring Archangel Michael in just to just to like help you feel supported in cutting that energy cord and trust that it's safe, nothing bad will happen to you to continue to cut cords. And that it's actually, um, would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have safety while you're cutting cords with people? And I'm just feeling like a little off in my tummy. Does anybody feel like they feel, because we're talking about the sacral chakra, how's everybody's tummies feeling? Anybody's stomach feel a little sick or upset? You can just unmute yourself or you can use the chat. It doesn't matter. More like tight. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, it just all of a sudden kind of, 
felt I felt something um but then I also felt some something in my throat too so I'm glad you're actually talking about it because sometimes um writing just isn't as powerful as speaking right so let's do just a little energy exercise I've done this quite a few times in my classes but it never uh seems to fail me because I find it's really helpful to identify with moving the energy for yourself but also understanding what the energy means for yourself it's more my heart chakra. Okay, perfect. So everybody can just pick the area that they're feeling that something in. And we're going to just do a visualization exercise. Okay, so we're closing our eyes. Just regrounding with permission. Because this just feels a little trauma related. And when I say trauma, like, it, like, so many things can be trauma related, right? It doesn't even have to be a big thing. It's just when the energy is not feeling whole. Okay, that's how I want to explain it. So as we identify that area of our body, we're actually going to describe the, the emotion a bit more. What does it feel like if it were an emotion? Is it sad? Is it happy? Is it grumpy? Mixed up. Confused? Okay. And uh, where is it located? Sophie? The heart. The heart? Okay, so we've got two hearts, a throat, and a stomach. <laughs> but we labeled it stomach, but it, it could be both places, so it doesn't, and tight. Okay, yeah. So everybody's feeling the, the like, constriction, right? That's our bodies kind of saying, oh, not sure about this. The fight or flight response, right? So as we, because uh, this is pretty heavy work, like I said, right? So you're just opening up to this and then just trusting that you'll get exactly what you need moving, moving forward. Um, so as we like identify with the emotion, the location, we're going to put a color to it now. So could be any color, just picking that color, trust in the, by using imagination. We're going to put a shape to that area of the body. Triangle, square. And we're gonna put a sound. So maybe it's loud or squeaky. And it might have a texture as well. Could be lumpy, could be smooth. And it might have a temperature, it might be, you guys said, like tight, right? So, but is it like a hot type, like a heat, like a burning, or is it maybe cool in temperature? So as you identify with this, you probably have a good grasp on what this energy is and how it, you're describing it. And because we're all sensitive empaths here, we would not have shown up if, to do this practice if we weren't. Um, hence why we need the extra, the extra work on the heart, right? Because we feel so deeply, we feel everybody else's emotions and pain. Sometimes we take it on for ourselves. So when we do these exercises, we go really easy and really gentle. We never pull energy out. So what we're going to do is energetically, just by using visualization, we're going to uh, take that shape that you described from that area, and we're going to uh, bring it outside of the body. So we're just going to see it now outside of the body. And we're going to fill it up with white light, that angelic light that we're using, that we're working with, that feels safe and comforting, but it's purified, it's angelic. So anything that was in there is now purified and outside of your body. And we're going to ask it a question, this purified shape. What were you here to teach me? And just trust whatever message you get. What were you here to teach me? You might be getting a box of information. Mm 
And then after you get that message, we're just going to, I always like to say thank you whenever I get a, a message, just because I like to acknowledge that that's something like a down, if we're receiving a download, right? We're receiving an intuitive message from spirit. So we're taking that new knowledge and wisdom and we're bringing that back with the purified shape back into the area of the body where it was originally hanging out. And then we're gonna just take a few really deep cleansing breaths. And just notice if that feels better, lighter, Calmer. Calmer? Good. Yeah, I love doing that because it's amazing. Better? Good. Everybody feels better. Okay. And would you like to let go of whatever that emotion was that you were hanging on to there that you described? And would you like to replace it with that new knowledge and wisdom that you got in your intuitive message? So you can start vibrating that moving forward. Would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have healing energy on a daily basis? So anytime you feel like you need to do this exercise, you can go back to it. Or anytime you want to uh, call in angels, you can call in angels. I'm getting just to trust that, whatever that looks like for you, right? And I'm going to get anybody that feels comfortable to share what that experience was like for them. Like where, what, what emotions were coming up? What did it, what did it, like, did you get it, get a message? What was your message? Anybody? Um. For me, I could feel it in my stomach, in my heart, in my throat. Um, it was tight. Uh, my heart was pounding. Uh, the message that I got was, speak up and know your boundaries. <laughs> I'm so glad because I was I was feeling and hearing the person that goes to speak I need to ask them if they're working on their boundaries and if so how because we haven't touched on boundaries yet so I'm so glad that you got that message yeah and I knew throat would be coming up for people so that's why I chose to focus on heart and root uh, but absolutely like throat's going to be coming up because we get ourselves into these places for a reason, right? When we feel like we're upset or we're angry or ashamed or feeling negative, it's all usually because we're scared to talk about that. We're scared to let that out. We're scared to have those conversations or tell somebody, right? So thank you for sharing. So how are, Louise, how are you working on your boundaries right now? Just so I can be a little bit more specific with how I can serve. Well, actually what I've been doing really is just noticing when I'm, my, when my mood change, you know, if I go from happy to angry or scared, what, what is the emotion? And then I try to identify why or what is it, what it is. And, and sometimes I have, well, it goes with what I'm going through right now. But um, if I speak up and I say no for something, as I would have normally said yes, <laughs> normally it helps me a lot. Okay. But that's, that's how I process the feeling I guess the the emotion I guess okay. yeah so it, it sounds like you're really working on uh 
like only doing things that you want to be doing or that you intuitively feel like you're supposed to be doing? Um, I will, how can I say this? I guess it's more like if, if I notice that I have all of a sudden I feel totally different and it doesn't feel good. That's when I stop and I try to figure it out. Or... Okay. Yeah. So would you say that's more about, is that more of a boundary with yourself that you're working on? It's like stopping to, to breathe and con to connect and see where the energy is coming from. Um, I've had times where I knew that wasn't coming from me. Um, but when, when I stop and try to identify what it is that I'm feeling and why there's a change in my mood, let's say, normally I can tell if it's from me or somebody else. A lot of times, lately anyways it's from me okay yeah so you're so you're kind of so what, when it comes to boundaries are you saying you're working a lot more on identifying when if if it's if you need to put a boundary in place or not because is, is it something that somebody else is doing to you versus something that you're feeling on your own um is that what you mean? I just want to be clear so I understand where the boundary piece comes in if it's if it's how you're going to implement more boundaries. Yeah, well, it depends. Um, you know, when you always say yes and you start saying no to people, they wonder what's wrong with you. <laughs> but um, that's okay. I'm, I'm past that now, so that's a good thing. Uh, it's easier for me to say no uh, when it comes to boundaries. Uh, Okay, so when when you got that message that you're working on boundaries or that's what you're implementing, how are you going to start implementing that new boundary? Is it uh, learning to let go of like other people's energies? Is it is it not reacting to other people? Is it saying no and then just not feeling guilty afterwards? Yes, feel, saying no and not feeling guilty, you know, like it's no and it's no. <laughs> so that makes more sense. You're becoming more firm in your boundaries. So when you go to speak, you're heard and it's final and there's no questioning. Nobody's questioning you. Nobody's um, trying to convince you otherwise to push you over, push you backwards, that you just go to speak and they listen and they respect it and you feel good because you're standing in your power. It, well, yeah, some people will still try to poke <laughs> and push. Yeah. And I go in, in circle in my head, you know, like, okay, I just said, no, I don't want to do this. Maybe <laughs> they're right. Okay. And then it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Okay, so I'm glad you can identify with that because that is all throat chakra. It's the doubt. It's I go to speak my truth. You need to hear me. You need to listen to me. And I also have to trust that I'm putting this in place for a reason because like you said, I'm energetically feeling like and emotionally that I need to do that. And I'm and so the firm firm part is what I feel like you're working on is sticking to that and standing in it and feeling good about it. Like you said, so you're not starting to now question yourself or doubt yourself, which is all throat chakra. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes I think it over and then I say, nah, whatever it, it, it. Yeah. because I said no at one point, then they're still trying to debate it. I, sometimes I feel it's not as important all of a sudden mm -hmm. to have my, my, to have it my way, if I can put it that way. It's not necessarily the case, always the case, but what I mean is just picking up sometimes and having someone listening to me, after that, it's like, it, it 
it doesn't feel as important for me to to get my word across in the sense I if I have a, a sense that the other person was listening right there I feel right there I feel already halfway better if I could say yeah part of that is being heard and the other yeah. is being respected the other part yes. of that is you actually being in your power so that's actually a lot of solar plexus um being in your power feels so good because your heart feels good you feel mm -hmm. rooted into the earth because you're coming from a place of love which is interesting because that's what we're talking on is is forgiveness you're you're not worried about all the the negative bad things that have happened in the past when you spoke your truth no you're like, this is the way and I'm leading this energy. This is my life and this is how I want to live it. So in a way, it is your choose starting to choose yourself first. Yes. Uh, it's not selfish to do that. So I think that's wonderful that you're putting yourself as a priority in your own life. And it doesn't mean, I just keep getting that it's not selfish to do that because a lot of people uh, that are really kind start to feel that it's selfish to uh, yeah. want things to be about them. <laughs> yes and, and you're right there's a balance but what you're saying is the fact that you can speak what your needs are and you can communicate them that's how we compromise that's how we have healthy relationships because if we can't be honest with those people because we're too scared of the things that have happened to us in the past that we're still hanging on to then yeah we won't have that balance that we need because we want other people to feel safe that they can be honest back with us mm -hmm. so if we're not feeling safe with them to do that, they're not going to feel safe to do that either. Right. So that's great that you're acknowledging, like you want to do that, even if you're not as, you know, you may not be exactly where you want to be, but the fact that you're acknowledging just through that exercise, that that's something you need to do. It tells me that you're going to do that. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't come out as I would like it to come out. <laughs> I Sometimes I have to, rephrase whatever I just said but still pushing the same idea you know so that the other person understands what I'm trying to say Perfect. so let's do a little uh, theta healing on that as well because I'm sure everybody can benefit from that as well that's why we're here to like so everybody can soak up all this good stuff so would you like to clear and release all that heaviness around boundaries that you already set so anything to do with, um, I kind of put this in your, in your mouth a little bit, that it's selfish uh, to, to uh, put yourself first or that it's selfish to uh, take up space or take up energy or take up time or um, take really to receive even. So I'm just, I'm adding those in because I feel like there are other people that are kind of relating to that portion of things. And would you like to let go of that on a history level as well? So maybe it's that it wasn't safe for a woman to speak her truth. It wasn't safe for a child to speak their truth <laughs> or like a student, um, a wife, whatever, like whoever being a grandmother, whatever it is. Um, but it's not, no, I, I, this isn't my, you know, spot to say. Uh, who am I to say this? You know, I should just mind my own business. Whatever it is, any time you felt like it wasn't safe to speak or you were pushed down or you were told that you were less than and it, it's not your time or whatever it is where you were, sh <laughs> we don't speak kind of thing. Or even if you felt that way energetically, just from yourself, you your negative self-talk of saying, oh no, I probably shouldn't say this now. It's not a good time when we start to, like you said, now we're questioning ourselves, well, even if we know it's a good idea. So any self-doubt as well, which I know everybody else is gonna relate to that. And let's let that go on all levels. So it might be, I feel like there might be somebody who came into the world with throat chakra blocks um, as a past from a past life experience. I know I have had that issue. I, I know I'm here to work on that throat. Um, and would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have, to be a clear channel or to be a clear vessel for yourself on a daily basis? So you can walk into situations 
feeling guilt-free and that you can have healthy boundaries with other people. And would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to embody boundaries on a daily basis so that you can start to feel up energetically in your body so that when you go to speak, it, it doesn't make you feel nervous anymore? And I'm just going to invite everybody to look into future. You know how at the beginning we did this? How we kind of started into connecting to like energetically where we are from a one to 10. I'm gonna invite you now to look into your future as a person who is healed. And now I'm just gonna get you, yeah, just to kind of look at your perspective around what that looks like for you now. Now that we did that little talk around boundaries. Now that we did that little exercise on your heart chakra. What is, what is your future looking like now? Brighter and exciting, wonderful. Yeah, because it, it's so nice to know that it's possible. <laughs> and it is possible. We just have to decide that we want it and sometimes why we want that. It's just a matter of making the decision, but the energy clearings can be really helpful because up here we can know we want something, but if we aren't, if we're still feeling nervous to do that, it just like that's something that never seems to really go away until we do the energetics of it, right? So would you like to know that it's safe to attract and manifest this new version of you into your life? Nothing bad will happen. Would you like to let go of anything that's actually blocking you still from attaining that future goal or that future vision that you have for yourself? Would you like to let go of any emotions or feelings of being stuck and any emotions or feelings of stubbornness? Let's let go of uh, times in your life where your ego or your head led your life. And let's shift that inner energy over to trusting your heart now, moving forward. Trusting that your heart will start speaking to you. Let's let go of any stuck, frozen energy in relation to times in your life where it wasn't safe for you to have boundaries. Any type of abuse as well that might have come up as a result of, of that lack of safety. Okay. Yeah, it could, could have been an abusive partner. That could have been a sibling. Could have been anybody. Anybody who played a role on your stage that, that was struggling as a result of something that obviously happened to them as a child or something that happened to them as as uh, like as a result of how they're acting, reminding ourselves that hurt people hurt. And there was obviously something that happened to that person. So would you like to know that it's safe to forgive any of those people who, who might have had something to do with some of that stuck frozen energy? And trusting that you're only going to invite the healing in that you want want to at this time and also trusting that you will only attract what it is that you're able to handle as well so if you have any fear around receiving these just trust that that things will still align exactly the way that they're meant to <sighs> nothing bad will happen to you okay now i have a question for anyone in here um, did anybody have like a family member who might have died or was injured in like a accident? I was seeing kind of like a, a mine, like a um, like way back when, like a uh, like a coal mine. You know, when there's like a man with a light with a light on underneath the ground. <laughs> 
and I don't know if they something happened to them or when it's okay if not uh, because this could also be um like down the road that you don't know about that if it were like a family a family member but also it could be a past life thing that happened to somebody too that they actually like uh died or were they were injured where like everything came in on them uh that's getting any chills everywhere Louise, you're you're saying yes, and we were talking. We've been talking about you a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I um not me, but a friend of mine, his father, his dad. That happened to him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that still affects us, right? Absolutely, it's it's attached to us. Yeah, because think about all the pain that that person would have. Uh, experienced as a result of that it's what the community is experiencing right yes. the sadness and the loss and the grief so a big part of forgiveness work and heart chakra work is uh, grief right we're grieving and that's why we're um you know we need to uh, sit and feel and then when we can sit and feel and process and take time for ourselves to to value ourselves enough to do that then it's easier for us to let things go when stuff when stuff is happening. But when we're grieving and people are mean or people are rude, we're much more likely to hang on to it because we're still hanging on to something else, right? So yeah, grief is definitely in there. So do you want to let go of anything that's happened to you or your community or anyone um, like a friend or a relative? that um experience trauma as well and so like any sticking sticking sticky sticky and frozen apparently makes sticking i think i'm hungry for chicken <laughs> you found a new word <laughs> so yeah do you want to let go of that any type it's just feeling like a sticky energy as a result of like other people's trauma essentially that's affected us that might still be kind of like sticky residue it's like just not a lot but it's just enough that it's a little icky and anything to do with a past past life in there because there is someone who's had trauma from past life again i know i have for sure most people have had trauma from past life but i'm like where yeah where we couldn't breathe i guess that's what's coming up cause some anxiety or feelings of like claustrophobia or I don't like to be in crowded places or in places where people are on top of me it's just kind of what I'm getting um and would you like to know that it's safe to breathe in ways that are supportive for you as you move through this energy moving forward so that you can emotionally be a little bit more available for the people that you need to be there for and also that you can um continue to ground as a result of your new breathing practices. And has anybody experienced PTSD here? Or had the connection? Okay, so Julie uh, is saying yes, okay. So is there anything you want to want to bring up as a result of that is just, I'm just hearing PTSD. So is there like a situation or an energy that comes up? I had a gun pulled on me. Okay, yeah, so that's a big one. Um, yeah, so it's like instant fear, right? Okay, so do you, do you wanna, Julia, were you trying to talk? No, okay, so that's somebody else. Uh, do you want to let go of times in your life where you were in extreme fear, flight, fight or flight, to the point where you thought maybe you were going to die or you were going to lose something that was significant to you? What And it doesn't mean death, but like losing anything that was significant to you, the feeling of in intensity um, 
and the feeling of loss, okay? And would you like to know that it's safe to open up to these old wounds in divine timing so that as you start to approach these things, so for instance, if you're coming into the program, that like you'll do this in divine timing so that you can work through the emotions that you're feeling in ways that are most supportive for you. And would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to be in rest and digest on a daily basis? Nothing bad will happen to you. Okay. I'm hearing the word counseling. Um, so Julia, did you get end up getting counseling from that? Like, did you treat, kind of start to get that treated? Oh, she might have said. Might have said yes in there. Sorry, it's just too long to type. Right. Um, <laughs> not not for that specific um, event, not for that specific event. But later on, I did have counseling when um, I got triggered again, where I was in a situation where there were guns. That's right. Like, because that's, yeah, like, that's the thing with PTSD is just it it really never seems to go away and sometimes we think it's gone um but it ne it's never gone right <laughs> um but i think it's how we it's how we manage our not just our triggers but i feel like for myself anyway my environments like how how i how i live my life essentially right my lifestyle and i know you specifically have a kind of stressful lifestyle right you deal with death yeah <laughs> so it's like you've got someone with trauma that also deals with trauma <laughs> right so <Yay. laughs> but do you feel like you are on the like you're exactly where you're supposed to be because of your trauma well like, when it comes to my job yeah I really believe I'm supposed to be where I am yeah just sharing like that's how I how I feel too like I've I've had trauma and I feel like I help people with trauma because yeah. I don't know you just you you've experienced it and it's like uh it's like um it's like we want to pass over the knowledge or pass over the healing uh that's why I was kind of saying when we were doing this exercise like to invite you guys like as you heal and as you forgive to encourage that and pass that along to other people, right? As we do that for ourselves and with other people, all of a sudden we just like, we want to become a helper, right? Um, yeah. It's just normal because we know how good it feels. And it doesn't mean everybody's going to listen, right? Um, but at least if we feel like um, we're doing a little bit of something, a little bit of compassion, a little bit of kindness, that's going to make us feel better and it's going to and it's going to keep that cycle going which is amazing so thank you so much for being brave and sharing that is there anything else julia that's coming up for you that you're with boundaries or heart or root i i think i'm just on this journey of learning to have boundaries and not feeling guilty about them i used to feel really guilty like if i said no then i would like fixate on on feeling guilty for days <laughs> but now I'm not that bad about it <laughs> I've right. I've kind of um, yeah That's a little bit in there um I what I'm also getting to is sometimes it's a it's around like canceling on people will say like last minute or you know if you made a plan with somebody right because when we've had trauma also sometimes our moods are a little, we're more sensitive. So like if something happened to us that day, we might have lower energy, right? Just even being an empath. So it's, we want to surround ourselves around other people who are also like empaths who are kind and compassionate and forgiving when we cancel on them because we're not having a good day or we're tired and we don't want to drain ourselves, right? Like, so that they get that. Yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense. It sounds like you're working a little bit more on lifestyle. Um, so would you like to let go of everything you just said, feeling like there's still a little bit of like that toxic energy when you go to present, hey, these are my needs, that you still kind of be like, he, he, like you're, like you're not 100% like 
confident in expressing those things to other people and mm -hmm. like to know what it looks like and feels like to invite healing uh, to your inner child as well so that baby you or a little you can have more compassion for yourself as you're learning and growing spiritually so you're not um, being hard on yourself as you're as you're growing Does that feel good to you? Yes. That feels really good to me. So what I see visually is like almost like a firecracker or like Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you have a really strong personality. We, we know that. Um, and you're a firecracker. But yeah. <laughs> I see stars as like um, someone who wants to be themselves. Someone who is a star, someone who does deserve to stand out of a crowd. So that's what I see for us as a group too, that we're going to start feeling like we're not just worthy of stepping into our power and our light, but we're actually just, we're actually going to like help people as a result of that, right? Because people that love us want us that way. They really do. We're not disrupting them by improving ourselves by the way. Um, and the people that we are disrupting as we change are also people who, you know, energetically have to work on themselves too, right? So if we're triggering other people, it's not our job to be like, ooh, like, oh, I don't want to trigger that person. It's like, yes, but everybody has to do their own work, right? So uh, does anybody relate to that, that they're scared to trigger other people? Oh, yeah. Sophie, is that you? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, like, you know, because you didn't even really say anything in here. So you're like, don't want to rock the boat. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so how so? Like, what, what is your fear around triggering other people? Mm. It's always been there. Yeah. So what would happen? Like, so sometimes we do uh, a little exercise where it's like, what's the worst thing if you triggered someone? confrontation yeah that's a big one right because we all have nice we're all like nice people nice person syndrome kind of thing yeah so if there's confrontation what will happen to you in your worst case i don't want to go there <laughs> there we go what did you say? I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because usually it it almost always leads to death <laughs> in a way. Um, because it's like, and then what? And then what? Well then I die. Right? It's just a way to it's just a way to explore like our thinking and how like we always just go into that fear mindset, right? Of like worst case instead of best case. And we go into worst case to keep ourselves safe, to protect ourselves, right? Because something happened to us along the way that like proves that when we go to speak our truth or when we talk about something that's a little bit taboo or whatever it is, that's going to hurt someone's feelings. And then like, and then they're going to get angry at me probably. And then I was trying to do a good thing and now it backfired and I'm hurt. So when I speak my truth, I get hurt. Does that kind of make sense? You in there? For sure. Does, so, but does that make sense? For sure. Yeah, so it's just understanding the attachment. I think that it's like, when I do this, this happened. So I'm just not gonna do that. So it's, it's rewiring a little bit of, of that so do you want to let go of times in your life where um you had fear or like um a fear-based mindset towards um being honest being open or um even being emotional that like do you want to let go of, of all of that would you like to know that it's safe to open up your heart chakra in ways that are most productive for you. So when you go do 
you go to open up your heart that you feel safe when you open up your heart? And would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to trust your intuition when it comes to that? So when you know it's safe to speak up to the right person, you do. And when you know it's not safe to speak up to someone, you don't. Would you like to know the difference between speaking your truth and being an asshole? <laughs> yes. Okay, if it's a no. Wish to. Perfect. So there's this thing called muscle testing where if we have, if we, if it's like a yes, we lean forward. If it's a back, we lean, uh, it, we go back for now. So I do this exercise. Um, like, is my name Robin? And my name is my name Sophie. Well, I'm kind of like going back and forth there. So is my name Julia? No. Mm -hmm. So um, it's good to just kind of be able to identify with our yeses and our noes. It's called mu muscle testing. So it's like, is my name Robin? Yes. Is my name Julia? No. And it, there's just, ton this is something you guys can look up. But Sophie, if you're open to doing this exercise, you can ask, it is, it is safe for me to speak my truth. And everybody can muscle test this if you want to. And I'm going to do that healing download for you as well that we just said. And everybody else that wants that. But speaking your truth and knowing the difference between uh, speaking your truth and being honest. Yes. Does everybody get it safe for me to speak my truth? Did anybody get enough? Because it's okay if you did. Because there's a reason for that. I'm just reading the chat real quick. Nobody got enough? It's everybody's good with speaking their truth? No. <laughs> no, trust me, like this is one throat chakra. Um, throat chakra blocks are literally something that we never stop working on. Just saying so you know. Like, cause we're always learning to trust. Like that's what we're here to, if we always trusted ourselves, right? If we were always right and we always trusted ourselves, well, why would we be here? Nobody, we, we're here on earth. We all have egos, right? It's not easy. We're navigating. Okay, so Julia, what, what comes up for you around, um, it's not safe for you to speak your truth? Um, well, I'm very careful who I would speak my truth. Um, in front of there have to be people that I'm already safe with like if it was somebody I was meeting for the first time I'd probably uh, kind of feel them out first and like have a filter yeah just yeah, to, yeah right. you don't have a filter to see if I could you know is it safe to share with them or not yeah and that makes sense based on your trauma don't you <laughs> yeah yeah, because it because your trauma was like it, it wasn't safe for me to say anything at this point or someone's gonna shoot me maybe, right? Like life or yeah. death. Yeah. I definitely relate to that one too. Mine wasn't a gun experience, but along the lines. So yeah, like you just know, but actually what in my scenario I just want to share, like I actually talked my way out of the something really bad happening to me. So, I mean, there's two scenarios, like you could shut your mouth and, you know, say nothing so that you don't, something bad doesn't happen to you, or you, you've got to say something, right? And, and you never know which is the right, right one. Um, so, so let's, let's let that go, Julia, of feeling like it's not safe, that you would need to like feel, basically you need to be like a watchdog or like a cat or like an animal where you have to like sniff everything out constantly to see what's safe and what's not safe. So let's like back on all levels too, because that actually might be like a genetic thing where you had a family member or somebody in the family that needed to always sniff things out before they mm. did something or made a choice. And again, that's a little bit of a that throat chakra issue too, because there's just a little bit of dope. It's like well, it's good to have a little healthy amount of doubt. It's good to have a little bit of logic. It's good to have a little bit of skepticism, right? It keeps us safe. 
but it's also like not really um, healthy <laughs> either, right? So let's let that go on a genetic level, just so we understand it. And any times in your life where you were um, criticized or mistreated as a result of speaking your truth, how would you like to know what it looks like and feels like to have healthy boundaries with yourself and others so that when you go to speak your truth, you can also identify with um, how you are being perceived. So in that way, you can then decide how you want to proceed. Does that sound good? It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Good. That just feels a lot better, but I still feel a little sick to my stomach. Does anybody feel a little sick to their stomach? No. No, I don't. No, everybody's good. Sophie? Nope. Okay, good. Okay, I'm going to do a download for me. Because <laughs> I just feel like for me, um, my... My mother-in-law right now is really, really sick. Um, and because we're talking about speaking our truth. So I'm going to be brave and speak my truth. And um, so she has, you know, children. And of course, when you have children, you hope and want them all to um, take care of you and be there for you. Um, but in this situation, um, I'm kind of stepping forward more um, to help. And so, of course, it's really easy to say, well, the family should be doing blah, 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 right? Not me. Um, so, but I'm getting in a little bit of trouble for wanting to speak my truth about it because I'm going to ruffle everybody's feathers because you're bringing up all this family stuff that's been there for years and all this stuff. So, um, so it's, it can be very challenging to lead, to be a leader and be a truth speaker, as we're talking about with triggering other people. Because yes, we do have to be gentle. We do have to be compassionate and still think about how somebody's going to feel or how somebody's going to react without being in fear of that, right? Because not everybody's equipped with the tools to receive the truth. And so I do think the way we deliver things, which I am still working on, <laughs> is really important because everybody's so vulnerable these days and everybody is so sensitive that there are so many terms, like especially being in the public, right? It's like, am I supposed to call this person like native or indigenous or, you know, like if someone's a transgender or whatever it is, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, I don't want to say the wrong terminology, so maybe I just won't say anything at all so I don't get it wrong. I don't, know, I don't know if other people relate to that or not. So, but then, so I catch myself sometimes being like, okay, well, I'm being fooled. I'm not supposed to, to, to say anything, so I'm going to respect other people's boundaries, right? So it is very much challenging sometimes to respect others' boundaries and speak our truth because if somebody's telling us, hey, my boundary is, for you to not speak, right? We have to respect what they're what they're um, saying. However, we need outlets. So just keep that in mind that speaking our truth could be through writing a forgiveness letter, writing a forgiveness letter towards ourselves, um, writing a letter to the universe, right? If you pray or things like that, you could be almost like writing out a prayer of some sort. So just keep that in mind. If you feel like there are times where you're not safe to speak your truth, or there were times where you're like, wish you did, but you didn't, you go into regret mode. You can still find ways to get that out, whether it's through like working with me, um, you know, saying that in your, even in your quiet meditation, having little, you know, communication with spirit, but we've got to get that out of us or it absolutely will develop into um, suppressed energy, which is all this junk that we're feeling right here, right? Where we have heavy breathing, we're not able to ground as much. We're feeling sad or angry. I don't know why. I guess that we, I feel like we kind of needed this. Um, does anybody relate to any of this? Yeah? Okay. Yes. 
Good, I'm glad it's connecting, but I just, I guess I just feel like, and I feel other people's energies before our class too, even if I don't know who's going to be in there. And um, so I just kind of listened to a couple things about forgiveness before we came on here, took some pictures of some information. And one of the things that was coming up is uh, learning about self-compassion versus self-forgiveness as well. Um, so I don't know if that's something like for homework. Um, for you guys to maybe re research a little bit what is self-compassion and what is self-forgiveness um, but just because they're very similar but they're different um, but that's kind of what I'm getting would be helpful for you guys um, because it does feel like a lot of this energy that we're feeling is very suppressed and it's stuff that we're actually um, doing towards ourselves because we obviously need more outlets which is why we're all here but I'm just encouraging more outlets so whether it's coming into the program or just learning more, more tools, but speaking to somebody about it and writing about it and just like getting that out of you. That's, that would be my suggestion, right? Because sometimes we can't always tell the person, sometimes people are dead. Sometimes we don't want to talk to that person, right? Maybe they don't want to talk to us, whatever it is. So there are, are times where we've got this stuck energy and we can't really do anything about it. So any last questions? I only want to go until eight, but then I always go to 8.15, just pre-warning you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boundary of time. Any last questions, guys? I'm going to integrate the energy for us and close up, but before we leave. No, is that helpful for everyone? Yes. Yeah, so, yes. definitely. And you think, rock. What's that? Oh, I rock. You rock. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because I like, you're sensitive, I know that, but you're also funny. I feel like you get that, like, I like to laugh, right? But um, when I was saying, like, the truth, the difference between speaking your truth and being an asshole, I just kind of found that a little funny because, it, <laughs> I mean, there are assholes out there in the world who don't care. Right? They purposely try to ruffle people's feathers, upset people. They're trying to get like a reaction out of you. Right? And so that can cause a little bit of us not wanting to be the asshole. Right? And we will never be the asshole, by the way. We wouldn't be here if we. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so I pulled up two cards here as we close out of the energy. One is um, the King of Cups, which represents someone who is really, really sympathetic. And so that's what I was saying for homework to keep working on having sympathy for yourself. Right? It doesn't mean we're a victim. It just means we're having sympathy for our experiences, like as a child, you know, things that have happened, et cetera. Right? As we're talking about with Julia, a little bit of inner child work. And I feel like I'm obese a little bit. And then we have Five of Swords loss, which is what we were talking a little bit about, um, you know, that fear and trauma from the past that like it's things aren't safe for us because we're going to, there's going to, we're not, we're not gaining here if we speak our truth, basically, right? So my invitation also is for you to trust that moving forward now after all these downloads that it is safe for you to speak your truth. But what will happen is when we start up on Wednesday, you're going to have a whole nother bag of, bag of things because now you're speaking your truth. And <laughs> that's <what you're> <laughs> now things are going to be happening, right? And it's like, okay, but looking at, okay, well, the, the gains are, I'm noticing that, you know, I'm having closer relationships because other people are being more honest with me, right? People are more appreciative of my, my kindness because now I'm also just speaking... Like, hey, I really like your shirt. Maybe you were shy before, whatever it is. Like, you wouldn't have told that to a stranger or something. Um, but then the negatives could be like, yeah, I think I really pissed off this, this person because I decided to, after not speaking to them for 10 years, called them after I had a few drinks. We'll just say. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a little cocky, you know? I took it a little too far. But um, anyway, so there are always new things coming up. So I would encourage you, if you are going to be hopping into the program, just to write a couple things that are coming up for you um, that you want to work on, because it's just helpful to come into the class with things um, that you were, um, instead of mentally noting it, just that you were able to write down maybe at nighttime or something throughout your day of some positives or negatives. 
Sound good? Yep. Okay, wonderful. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just gonna close out of your energy here. So just sending a little healing to everybody's hearts. Okay. Just sending a little purple energy. Oh, there's a little kitty cat. And we're just going to integrate that with everybody's permission. All of the things that you said you want to let go of, all of our little imperfections that make us who we are, and all of those beautiful new uh, projects for yourself or partnerships or whatever those things were that you were, you were bringing in. And I'm going to say that or something better so we never feel like we're, we're starting to control how our future looks, okay? So we can let the universe start to guide us. I also have a spiritual support team underneath my Facebook. Um, so that is a safe place for people to share experiences, ask questions. And sometimes I'll put um, some tools there from my programs for people for homework and stuff. So anybody can check that out and uh, take advantage too. All right. And if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday night. Thank, Thank you all then. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.